Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another explanation for the mystery behind fast radio bursts. The mysterious radio signals we've known about for just over a decade now, and the signals that still don't really have a very good explanation. But it looks like we are getting a little bit closer. And this particular explanation is kind of interesting because it touches on things we've never thought about and explores some really advanced fields of physics that do have a potential to create incredible technology in the future. But obviously, because there are so many other explanations, we still don't really know what's going on here. What we do know is that these signals seem to be coming from everywhere. And they also seem to be mostly similar, extremely short bursts of radio energy and sometimes even repeating after several days. But because they're so short in terms of length, it's always been assumed that they're coming from very very small objects, very likely smaller than a thousand kilometers in size. And because of this, the explanations so far involve very compact massive objects. So in this case, we're talking about either really powerful black holes or possibly very specific types of neutron stars. And a potential collision between these objects have been suggested as a possible explanation for what we're seeing. But the thing is, if this is from collision of black holes or neutron stars, it wouldn't really explain how some of these objects seem to be also repeating and very often repeating extremely precisely. So a merger or a collision would not explain all of them. Other explanations involved the interaction between dark matter and possibly neutron stars or black holes. But in this case we know so little about dark matter that it's not really a very solid explanation. A mysterious phenomenon known as cosmic strings has also been suggested as a solution, same as with dark matter, we just don't really know enough about this to make this a conclusion. But in the last few years, more and more FRBs have been detected coming from so many different regions around the space that it's now become one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy. And as you can see, at least a few of them are repeating FRBs, whereas some of them are non-repeating. Although in this case, one of the explanations could be that they are repeating, we're just not seeing them from the right angle. But the biggest breakthrough came a few years ago from our own galaxy. There was a detection from a very, very well-known magnetar. And this, along with the fact that many of our bees seem to be very highly polarized, so just in magnetic fields, made magnetars the most likely source of the unusual phenomenon. And so today it's believed that it's somehow produced by magnetars. But that's where we kind of don't really know what's happening. So more theories have been proposed to try to explain what's going on. Here the explanations varied from possibly an orbiting object, maybe a planet or an asteroid, to possibly something breaking apart and falling onto the surface of a magnetar, or possibly, we just don't actually have a theory about this yet. As a matter of fact, maybe we haven't caught up with the theoretical predictions about what's going on around these very powerful objects, and we just don't really understand the mechanics. And that's actually where this new study comes in, because that's kind of exactly what they're proposing. They're proposing that there is a mechanism that can explain this, but we just don't really have the technology to test this yet, involving theories where we're only scratching the surface in terms of our understanding. With the main explanation being, the magnetic field itself is just ridiculously powerful here. So powerful that it starts affecting everything inside the magnetar and starts to actually produce things around the magnetar itself. The amount of energy from this magnetic field starts to involve the advanced theory known as quantum electrodynamics or QED for short. The theory that talks about the interaction between light and matter where both quantum mechanics and special relativity start to interact and become really important. Or in more simple terms, the magnetic field itself starts to manipulate matter around the magnetar and even affects the inward pressure inside the magnetar changing some of its gravity, which ends up distorting the magnetar but also starts to create a very specific type of matter around it. It creates a kind of a plasma, but not the same plasma that we have around us or that we can create here on Earth, at least yet. In this case, it's a type of plasma consisting of matter and to matter pairs or to be more specific, a pair of negatively charged electrons and positively charged positrons. And this, as a result, creates what's known as QED pair plasma. A strange phenomenon that we're still trying to create here on planet Earth because it does require very powerful magnetic fields, and so far only very powerful lasers have been kind of successful in sort of recreating this on Earth. And so unlike the plasma inside our Sun, in this case, the magnetic fields seem to produce very unique type of plasma that constantly annihilates and recreates itself, producing the electron-positron chains. But in this case, the scientists also think it possesses a type of a collective behavior. In other words, by having a lot of these particles together, they'll start to produce certain types of effects, including certain types of radio waves that would be detected from far away. 
But since we can't really produce these very powerful magnetic fields on Earth, the scientists have been mostly using laser analogs to try to recreate this in a lab. With some initial experiments already being kind of successful, but not super successful. And that's sort of the next step for the advances in our technology. At the moment we're still dealing with a lot of high intensity particle physics, but the QED plasma physics is the next natural progression. Essentially figuring out how to create and recreate a lot of these quantum effects here on planet Earth. And so it looks like the mystery of FRBs is slowly taking us into that direction because it could be the solution to that problem. So these strange signals coming from various directions in space could actually be produced by this unusual QED pair plasma that is only now being created in a lab. Well, the main purpose of the experiment is to not just produce this pair plasma, but to then observe what kind of a collective behavior it starts to have and if it actually does start producing an equivalent to an FRB. But because of the complexity of the experiment, it has not been conducted yet. Currently, the scientists are planning to conduct this using the Stanford University SLAC, National Accelerator Laboratory. And if they're successful, it might actually help us understand what happens in these extremely powerful magnetic conditions and how it actually starts to affect space and even gravity around it. Or basically explain the physics that's still unknown to us, the physics that is most likely the real reason FRBs even exist. But even though the theory behind this is pretty solid, it will still take some time and obviously a lot of money in order to possibly prove this idea. At the moment though, it's still pretty interesting. I mean, the fact that the magnetic fields are so strong that they actually start influencing the space around the object and create these particle-antiparticle pairs that then start to act together and produce radio waves, that's already pretty mind-blowing. And if correct, it would suggest that the magnetar itself doesn't even look like we think it does. I mean, imagine this object that starts to create matter around itself with a lot of different types of unusual plasma that sort of shifts around, disappears, reappears everywhere and starts to act in very unusual ways. I mean, it's almost impossible to even imagine this. And all of this simply because of these super powerful magnetic fields around these objects. The magnetic fields that don't actually exist anywhere else in the universe. The magnetic fields so powerful that they literally break space-time. But We'll talk more about this in some of the future videos because unfortunately we don't really know much else. There are a lot of other propositions and a lot of other theories and you can maybe even explore them in some of the previous videos that should be somewhere in the description. Until we learn something else or until we discover something else, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.